Hello, everybody. As Matja said, I am Krash Mirantovic. I'm a JavaScript team lead, one of the JavaScript team leads at Infinum. And I've been doing JavaScript development for the last five years. And uh, I'm going to try and tell you some of my experience while developing JavaScript applications by telling you how to engineer, I mean, generator. Uh, what you'll get from this talk? Well, honestly, not much. Um, who, who did front-end development, like real front-end development, like JavaScript development, and did real applications? Uh, you probably don't need to listen to this. Uh, but for the backend guys and for the, well, occasional front-end developer, this will be probably useful. Uh, you will get some code samples and a big showcase of technologies that you can use on your current application. Um, so trust me on this because I'm also an engineer. Um, but a word of caution, uh, your experience may vary because some of these technologies are really experimental or are not currently in all the browsers. So. If you're going to do this in production, please have a fallback or do it on the server or don't do it at all. OK, so let's start with the actual problem. Uh, the actual problem is that your customer usually uh, tells you that he wants to support IE8. And nobody wants to support IE8, especially because we can't use the newest technologies there. And we like, really, really, really like new shiny stuff. Well, everybody does, especially the kids. So I set my a goal for myself to try every technology possible. So I have to try them all. So I'm not trying to do JavaScript frameworks or anything like that, just the technologies that the browser uh, gives you. So for that, I actually needed a project, and I actually started treating it as a one, and it was a meme generator. So this is actually a sketch of a meme generator. Who actually doesn't know what the meme is? Well, Google it. <laughs> um, a meme generator looks like, like you have a meme image, some text, an input that goes into text, and that's it. So it's fairly simple. We will only have one challenge, just to use uh, client sound only technology, so no server thing is. Nobody does that. Um, stuff that we will use are two things, actually, tools and technologies. So for starting a project, we actually need to set up our development environment. Well, the JavaScript community and the JavaScript ecosystem is kind of <laughs> um, it's evolving. It's really, really evolving fast and nobody can keep track of it, and every day a new tool is popping up, and I really want to try them all, because actually a new tool means possibly something that will help me develop things better. So in this case, I actually used some popular tools that are here to stay, so you can actually use them in production. We are using them in production. Everybody is actually using them in production. So first, first is Webpack. Webpack is a bundler for static assets. So what that actually means, you will use it in development for uh, minifying, uglifying your JavaScript, CSS uh, images for production. And uh, it's very cool because it just does one thing, and that is assets. If you use Gulp or Grunt before, you probably did, uh, you can do the same things. Grunt and Gulp, you can actually deploy it to the server you can use to make automated tasks and compile your assets. Webpack does only one thing. It compiles your assets and does that very, very good. So please use it. Uh, one of the actual benefits of having Webpack is that it has a rich plugin system. So you can actually transform all that data that goes through it. So, for example, Nobody likes JavaScript, but everybody likes shiny new stuff, and everybody likes a real language. ES6 is real JavaScript language, so you have, you can actually 
start to think of JavaScript as a ling real language if you did Java before. Um, and, but you can't use that uh, in the current production code because most of the browsers actually don't run it and you have to support IE8. For that reason, there is a tool called Babel which transpiles your ES6 code to code for IE8. And it works great. And there is a plugin for Webpack that does that automatically for you. We will also use STSS. I'm not going to explain what that is. Uh, we will also have some linters uh, for J JavaScript, that's slint, and for CSS and SCSS, that's stylelint. There's also some pre-commit hooks that we will we are doing automatically with a cool tool called Husky. And for the tests, we won't do tests because we don't have time for it <laughs> and other reasons. So the basic project, uh, if you remember. Uh, something like this, so blah, blah, blah. everybody who did web development or all of the front end knows that's a few divs, a canvas for actually rendering text on an image, an input field, some JavaScript to make it work, and a small amount of CSS for making it look like something. I'm going to show how this looks. Uh, not that. Okay, and remember, this is not me, me, me. This is meme, me. Okay, so as I said, we have an input field which I will write down. Uh, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> so this works. So this is this basic project that we will use to test new technologies in. Okay. Let's continue. So what technologies will we use? I'm actually going to give you a use case for everything, then tell you a solution. So for example, you have a cool meme that would, you would like to show your friends, but you don't want to, well, um, be illiterate, because there's, there's always one grammar Nazi that will rain out in your parade. So there's a cool thing called spell check on input fields, which you use like this. So you just add spell check. And it's really cool. And it's that simple. That's it. Uh, okay, so you made a meme, and it would be really great uh, that you wouldn't have to show your mobile phone to everybody that you made a meme or, uh, or your desktop computer. So it would be great if I could download it. Yeah, everybody already did that. But there's, if you didn't know, there's a download attribute on a link. You see here? So that's a simple link, which you can use to download actual photos or any file at all. This is really useful when you're doing JavaScript application and doing some real um, manipulation behind the scenes with, uh, with the JS, so you can download the actual result on your computer. OK, there's also one more thing that I would like to show. Better photos everywhere. There are a lot of different devices in the world now, like mobile phones, desktops, projectors, which have different resolutions. And for different resolutions, you would actually need some kind of, well, different photos, because you don't really want to serve a photo of five megabytes, which is made for a projector on a mobile phone. There's a thing called a, the picture element, which actually does that for you with no JavaScript, the browser decides for you. The only thing that you actually need is just to specify which resolution goes with which image, and that's it. And it works really great. Uh, for the browser that doesn't work, like IE11, there's a great polyfill that will do that for you, and you can actually start using that now. Please use it. Uh, actually, I will just show you what I did now. So. I did something. I did something, mom. And I added the download button. And that's actually it. That's the only thing I wanted to show you. Oh, it's here. And it's, it's on my computer now. Yes, it's fairly simple. Yes, I know. Um, but I'm a lazy developer. Uh, when I say lazy, I really don't want to do stupid stuff 
by hand, and I would really like to have something that does this for, that does this for me. Wouldn't it be great if I wouldn't have to type things in into my uh, input field? Wouldn't it be great if I could just say it? Well, there's something called the Web Speech API, uh, which has speech recognition when you're only online. Uh, and the usage actually looks something like this. It kind of seems hard, but it's really simple. You just instantate the object and start listening, and you have the results already there. It's just text, and it really works nice. Uh, but when you're doing speech recognition, if you already did that, you probably know that the speech recognition is kind of wonky at times, so that means what you say isn't probably the text you're going to get because of the interference in the audience, like you guys, or uh, you're on a train. So wouldn't it be great if you had some way of checking it out, what you actually said was what you get, but you didn't have to read it? Because, I mean, <laughs> laziness. In the Web Speech API, there's also speech synthesis, which just tells you that. So you just say, please tell me something, hello all, and this will tell you. So as you see, it's simple, it's simple as pi. Um, OK, wouldn't it be crazy if, well, you just have my meme there, and I put that out as an application, and, well, it gets boring after some time, and because there's only my photo there. Wouldn't it be great if you had, could share other memes with it? Yes, it would be great. But, and there's something called Media Devices Get User Media, which is actually responsible for creating a media object for you to um, record audio and video, or audio only or video only. And from that, you can actually get a photo out. Again, the usage is very simple. You just do it, and it works. Uh, OK, so now you have all these photos downloaded on your computer, but, and you want to show it to your friends. OK, that you can do and share it over Twitter, Facebook, uh, MMS. But, but OK, so but do you really want to open your mobile phone and browse through your photos and look at all the memes, and there's one, one of your private photos that you don't want people to see? Well, it would be great if we could actually store them somewhere else. We can store them in our application. There's a thing called IndexDB in most browsers now, which is, well, it's a database, a NoSQL database which you can put stuff in, like data and images and files which are also data, and get them out at, at a later date. You can actually refresh your browser and it won't go away because it's persistent. And, uh, well, it works. And there's a fairly large, large limit. Like, it depends on the US and the browser. Uh, the actual API for this is pretty complicated, and I wouldn't recommend doing this because you'll, you'll lose some hairs. Uh, but there are great libraries that you can actually use to make this work better. Uh, Actually, I'm not going to show you what I did with this. You will see that it actually looks like a real application now. Uh, please don't mind my uh, CSS skills and design skills because I don't know how to do that. OK, so as I said before, it wouldn't be great if I could tell you something. OK. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? So we have the speech synthesis and the speech recognition, and it works quite OK. Uh, hello, world? OK, that, that doesn't work, but it, it's OK. And we can also get the record photo running. Uh, I guess I'm nice looking, okay. Uh, 
OK, and I can actually save it. There's no loading stage, sorry, guys. And here's a list of images. Uh, this is me in the morning. This is me uh, after making sure it works. And this is me now. And I can refresh the page. Here, I'm refreshing stuff. List images, they are here again. So as you see, this kind of feels like a real app now. You have AP different APIs that you can use for a uh, lot of good stuff, especially the actual DB thingy. Um, but what about working without internet? For example, you're on a big trip in the mountains, and you really, really, really like to have a meme uh, for that, but you can't, you can't uh, because you don't have the internet there. Well, there's a thing called a service worker, which can help you do that. It actually caches your, you can tell it to cache your uh, static assets, like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and other uh, API responses, if you really wish. So it's a network proxy, which uh, already one speaker explained. I won't go there. And it's great because on Android, you have push notifications. So like for mobile applications, uh, like iOS and Android. And it works only on HTTPS because you really, really don't want somebody to actually work on a network proxy that's not yours. This is a simple example of caching things. Simple. Uh, well, isn't it really, really hard to open a web browser, type in the address that you want to uh, go and make the meme? Wouldn't it be great if we could install that on our mobile phone or on a desktop? computer. Well, there's a thing called Web Manifest that does just that. It's a simple JSON that describes your application, describes your well, yeah, application. It's an application. And with this, you can uh, install it on your mobile phone. If you got an Android phone, it will tell you, do you want to add this to the desktop? Yes. If you're on Chrome, you will get, get it installed here. So now I have a meme generator. So and I can open it. Yeah. So it kind of feels like an app now. There are a lot of more technologies that I could go through with you. But well, there's no time, and there's too much of that. I'm just going to sell, uh, say a few stuff more about some other technologies, like Pointer and Wins, which is a great thing coming to web browsers now, which is uh, unifying touch and pointer events and other uh, events that happen on the screen. So you don't have to worry about them. Notifications. You have system-wide notifications that you can trigger from your web browser. Uh, web Audio API. You can make uh, theme music on your web page like 1999 again. There are NBA Lightning events. So you can actually uh, say, OK, it's really, really dark now. I will change my uh, desktop theme on my mobile application. There's the dialogue element. If you ever did uh, a model element on the web, you know how hard it is. There's a specification for it now. There are online and offline events. You know what that is. Uh, you have page visibility. So that actually tells you when the user is on your tab if it, and if he leaves the tab for another page. There's also a karaoke API, which currently isn't implemented anywhere, but I'm li really, really looking forward to it. Um, OK, so we actually got through the technologies and what I wanted to say here. But OK, what to say here for like uh, conclusion? Well, everybody knows the web is moving forward, especially the JavaScript uh, community and JavaScript environment. And I can hear much of the debate how people are tired because of JavaScript. Well, uh, to be honest, so am I. I'm really tired of it. But that's just because the front end, the web, is actually becoming more and more of like a real uh, business platform. And we actually have to do real engineering there. And yes, some things can be done on the server much easier. But this is really the right choice for it. Well, it, as you know, it depends. I, but I think it's much better than being in a standstill and developing, uh, again, pages like it's 1999. You know, 
uh, the GIFs and spacers, etc. Uh, why is this also important? Because actually this is kind of bridging the gap between mobile application, desktop applications, and the web. We previously didn't have any any interfaces for actually getting the, the database, the file system, the notifications. Now we have that. So it's kind of getting better. In the future, the web will, in the future, when I say future, I mean, I, I hope in two years, uh, the web will have a more bigger presence than it has now. And well, the na native developers will be out of a job. OK, they won't because native is still a good platform. Well, actually, the best platform for making high-performance apps and games. So I won't uh, sign it off yet. But we'll not, we're not there yet. Well, in the future, we'll be. So the web is moving forward, so we should also. We should try and think about the new technologies and just try them and tinker a bit because we have to be ready for the future. Thank you. There are a few more uh, resources here, and you can find the meme generator on Owen Engineered Me, me. and there's a GitHub, so if you want to play with the technologies, you can do that. Thank you.